Well, welcome everybody. And I'd like to thank the presenters and organizers for inviting me to the third annual Women Teaching, Trading and Investing. What a great idea. It's been said for a long time that women may be better traders uh, than men. I'm, I'm really not sure about that, but we'll, we'll take it. My name is Leslie Jufless, and I'm a chartered market technician. And I've been teaching and trading in the financial markets for over 24 years now. Um, the pattern that I'm going to show you today is a very classic pattern. It's called the AB equals CD pattern. I've got my email down here on the screen. So feel free to email me. I'd love to hear any comments. If there's questions that you have um, after the presentation today, feel free to uh, send them to me. I'm a regular contributor on stockcharts.com on their YouTube channel as well. You can find me on their show, Your Daily Five. And I also have articles that I post on their top advisors corner. But we have limited time today, so let's get started. Um, some of the material today you can also find in my book, Trade What You See, How to Profit from Pattern Recognition. I wrote this with Larry Pesavento, and it is available in five languages, English, Japanese, Chinese, German, and Italian. And some of the course today is also excerpt from my course you can find on udemy.com. It's a 12-hour on-demand video course, and you'll receive with that this book, Essentials of Trading. It's not what you think, it's how you think. And Larry and I wrote this as a motivational um, book, an inspirational book. There are times in trading that you just need something to sort of pick you up again. That's just the nature of trading. You have good periods, you have sideways periods, you have down periods with trading. So that's what this book is all about. But the pattern today we're going to go over and learn is called the AB equals CD pattern. And this pattern comes from repetitive swings in the markets and what are called harmonics related to those swings. And we can't have any trade setups using technical analysis without some type of repetition in the market. And traders should strive to have a specific focused approach in the markets. Um, all too often, traders come into the markets, they're new, and they're sort of shooting things over here, over there, and over here, and up here. Um, and it's very difficult to be consistent and to build the type of confidence that you need to trade long term. So focus is a, is a key. So start with learning something that really resonates with you and then strive to become an expert in it. So today we're gonna to go over a little bit of the history of this pattern. And some of you may already know the AB equals CD pattern or you may know the Gartley pattern, the butterfly pattern, three drive pattern. But I wanna point out that the AB equals CD, even though it's contained in those other patterns, is a pattern in and of itself. And a lot of people don't really realize that. So we're gonna start with looking at the parallel trend channel, very classic pattern in technical analysis. We're gonna look at the AB equals CD, the structure, learn the correct structure of this pattern and how some Fibonacci ratios can help us do that. I'll show you how to label the pattern, and we're going to cover some important characteristics and warning signs, look at the symmetry versus asymmetry, and then I'll show you a couple examples of one historic chart pattern now, and also very recent examples on from some of my live charts. So this pattern really was first described in 1935 by H.M. Gartley in his classic book, Profits in the Stock Market. Um, you can consider getting this book for your reference library. It is a fantastic book. On page 249, he described the practical use of trend lines, and that was basically describing parallel channel lines. And within those, we find ABCD patterns. Now, here's an illustration of a parallel channel. And these can be upsloping, downsloping, there can be horizontal channels as well. But the price tends to repeat by testing the lows and the highs of these patterns. 
eventually they're going to break out of this pattern to the downside or to the upside. But while they're in this type of a pattern, that's a range trading type of environment. When they break out, we're probably going into a trending type of environment. And it's very important to know what type of environment you're trading in. Here's an example on a price chart using the Euro futures on an intraday chart. And this pattern and all of the patterns I teach and trade are fractal in nature. So that means that they're going to appear on any time frame and they are in all markets. So whatever time frame you trade, you'll be able to learn and apply this pattern. So we can see up on the top left here, we can see at the top of the parallel channel, the price comes down, test the bottom, back up to the top, back down to the bottom. And this is repeating throughout. Well, notice how there are re repetitions in the length of these swings. And this is something that's occurring over and over and over. This is a strong tool for traders. Again, we can't have any trading setups without some type of repetition. So notice the blue lines. All I did was I drew from the top to the bottom of that swing. I cloned the line and I dropped it over. And they're almost identical in length. And then the upswings, I did the same thing with the pink lines. So here we can start to see the repetition. And some of these shorter swings will be related to the longer swings, usually by a Fibonacci ratio. So as an example, the length of this swing just passed that second pink line, that down swing there. And we look at the next blue line, that's about a 0.786 of the total length of that primary swing. So there's an example of some harmonics and repetitive swings occurring. Here's an example of the parallel channels. And down on the lower left, we can see that process happening again. This is all the markets do. This is it. They contract and they expand. So if you can learn to recognize which market environments you're in, then you can apply your trading approach to that market condition. And this particular pattern, all the patterns I teach can be traded in either type of market environment. So here we have the channel and that's more of a contracting phase. And we can see the high down to the low, test again, back down. And then you have the expansion phase. And then you go back into the contraction phase again, this, this one in another channel type of a phase. So now let's start talking about, with that information in mind, let's start talking about this AB equals CD pattern. Starting out with it, if you've never learned it or been exposed to it, think of it as a lightning bolt shape. So I've got that illustration here. The left side illustrates what a buy pattern shape looks like and the right side, what a sell pattern shape looks like. So we've got three waves to this pattern. The first wave is A to B. The second wave, B to C, is a retracement pattern. So it must retrace within the A to B swing, but not exceed the A point. Okay, that's an important part of the structure of this pattern. Notice that the buy patterns are always declining and the sell patterns are always going to be ascending. Now we can add some Fibonacci ratios. And this um, is what my Fibonacci ratio ladder looks like. And I'm sure most of you have Fibonacci tools available to you. When I started, they were hard to find. Um, Fibonacci ratios were still thought of as sort of tea leaves in the bottom of a cup. They weren't mainstream at all. Larry Pesavento was the person that took this pattern, the ABCD, and applied the Fibonacci ratios to the structure of it. H.M. Gartley never referred to Fibonacci ratios specifically with these types of corrective patterns. And he never referred to them as ABCD patterns and he never referred to them as Gartley, et cetera. So that was something that came years later. And the structure can help us validate or invalidate a pattern. 
Now I have my software tool allows me to draw the ABCD pattern and um, we'll get into what these triple D's are up here in just a minute. Um, but it's a very handy tool. It's within a program called Ensign. If people always ask me, you know, where it is and Ensign software is where you can find this tool. I think it's the best out there. But the Fibonacci um, ratios that I use primarily are on this ladder and I like to color code them. So there's the 382, uh, there's a halfway mark 0 0.50, 0 0.618, 0 0.786 and 0.886. So I call the 0.886 a last chance Fib retrace and it's one that a lot of traders don't use, but it's well worth having on your charts. This is a ratio that the market, especially in volatile uh, market environments, tends to trade to. And it's sort of the last ratio before you get up to that 1.0. When prices start closing above that 0.886, they generally are going to travel to the 1.0 and many times exceed that 1.0. So it is a good ratio to know. So here's with the, the labeling. Um, let me put a couple more clicks on here. There we go. So here is how we label the pattern. And if you're starting out, try and do a lot of these by hand. A hand connection to our brain always sort of cements things in, uh, in a better, we're used to doing things on computer screens, but just print some charts out and find these and draw them in by hand. So again, we have the A to B, C to D, that creates our lightning bolt shape. Our retracement, which is labeled in with a 0.618 as an example, usually is a dashed line. And the other ratio that we use is the B to C, and that will be an extension, usually a Fibonacci 1.27, 1.618. Sometimes we'll see 2.0, 2.618. But this extension is good to know because it can help us to sort of pinpoint sometimes where this pattern is going to complete. And one of the beauties of this pattern is that we can find these completion points well before they get there. And then we can monitor the pattern structure as the price is approaching to determine if it's a valid setup. Now for the structure of the pattern, let's start on the left with this little by illustration. So we have A, B, the C is the retracement, retrace C, mint, and then we have the C to D leg. So the C point here must be below where our A point is. It can come up to the A point, but it cannot exceed it. And over here, and so you have that for the cell pattern as well. And the D point, must extend beyond B. So if we look at that on our illustration, we can see the C point here is below A and our D point is below B. So this little graph here is going to help you as you're studying this pattern to know if you have the basic valid structure. Now, if we look at this on a price chart, uh, this is how often I, when I find my charts for presentations, all I need to do is open a chart. I know I do not need to hunt for these. They are always right there. So this is from an S&P 500, um, an intraday chart. And over on the left, we can see the A is marked in up to the B. Our C is a retracement. Notice it's the 0.886. That's our last chance retracement ratio. The market turns to the upside exceeds the B and completes the D there. So that 1.27 that you see marked in, that's taking the length of B to C and that is extending it. Uh, if the length is 10 points multiplied by 1.27, that would be 12.7 points and that would be added to the low of C and that would give you that price. But again, your um, tools in your Fibonacci um, tools that you have in your software should be able to find this for you easily. So if we look over here and down here, here's how you find those. So here we have a series of you know, our parallel channel line that we talked uh, about. The market comes into an expansion phase and then starts to go into the testing phase into the range again. And it's forming all these ABCD patterns as it does. So we have this smaller A, to B, to C, to D, it sells, 
comes back down to the bottom here. Here's an A, B, C, D buy pattern down towards the low part of this range back up to the high. And in, within this, there's a larger pattern forming. See where the capital A is, A, a B, a C, and a D. And this repeats, we come to the end of this and we have an A, a B, a C, D, a cell pattern up towards the top of the range again. And then you can see with these long wide ranging bars, the market is now starting to come into the expansion phase. So now that I've just told you A, B equals C, D, uh, and it does sometimes, but not all the time. So that's where we come into where I had those triple Ds here. So let's talk about what this is. And this is a very important part of this pattern. And I, you know, I see a lot of things out there on the vast, uh, you know, internet of people, you know, teaching this. Um, and it's what they know, but they don't know the intricacies because I've had a lot of years with this pattern. So here's some of the intricacies with this pattern that you do need to know. So about 40% of the time, A, B, and C, D will equal. But 60% of the time, so that's a large enough percentage that we have to pay attention to it, the C, D leg is going to be a variation or an extension. It's going to be longer than the A, B leg. Usually those extensions are going to be around the 1.27 Fibonacci extension ratio, 1.618, sometimes as far as the 2.0, but usually beyond the 2.0, which means it's twice the length of AB, usually beyond that, and it's a trending move. That doesn't occur um, as often, so I just keep the 1.27 and 1.618 up all the time, because these are the two that it tends to extend to the most frequently. So, um, there's another variation with this pattern. If we look down here, the CD leg can have a slope or an angle, we're gonna look at examples of this, that can be steeper or wider than our AB leg. So here in this illustration of ABCD cell pattern on the right, ABCD by, we can see that the two upward sloping legs are the same in the slope. Um, and the angle. But let's go and look at some examples. Oh, I forgot I had those. There we go, just showing you some extensions there. Here's an example using Forex. And again, this pattern is any market, any time frame. Forex traders, Bitcoin, you don't need a special um, program for this. You'll, you'll learn it all all in uh, my programs. But here um, we have a beautiful ABCD buy pattern <clears throat> that comes down right to the 1.0. Uh, notice the slope of the AB leg and look at that compared to the CD leg. The CD is a little bit wider. It took a little bit more time to get down to that 1.0. That's, that's okay, that happens sometimes. It's usually when we have examples where that CD leg becomes sort of parabolic, straight up and down. And we'll look at that in just a minute. But here's an example of an ABCD cell pattern. This is using a Forex um, chart of A, B, C, and D. And we're getting an extension on that CD leg up to that 1.618. Now, Again, I can't stress enough how important it is to learn and study these extensions with this pattern. I, I teach a lot of um, traders individually or they come and they just they need, you know, a few weeks of help. And so I help them. First thing I look at is the pattern structure. And usually that's where a lot of the difficulties come from. And so we work on the pattern structure until they strengthen that skill and then they can work on their trade plan from there. So notice on here, this long wide ranging bar and it's coming right through that first 1.0 D completion. So this is the 1.27 D completion, 1.618 D completion comes right through. So there's a clue right through the 127. And now we can see with our turn down the red candle that this is where the resistance is coming, coming in. Now I mentioned that BC leg extension. And so here we can see B to C 
the extension was a 2.618 and that coincided with that 1.618. So taking a look at where your B to C extension comes in many times will help you to um, kind of monitor one of these levels where the pattern may be more likely to complete. Um, so maybe the BC leg is coming in around the 1.0D and your CD is equal in length. So that gives you a clue that this may be where the pattern is completing. That's gonna help you with your trade management, your entries, um, et cetera, with that. So look for the slopes and an angles, check your BC extension, and also pay attention to these completion areas. Now, here is an example of an A, B, C, D. Again, and again, this is using um, a euro where we have um, more of an extension again on that C to D leg um, up to the 1618. But notice how it did get to this D 1.27 and it did get a bit of retracement. If we were to do a retracement from this low to high, it would probably be about a 0.382. Um, and so this is important to recognize as well for your trade management purposes. Now it continues up and it makes another kind of smaller A, B, C, D up into the D 1.618, up into a resistance area and a larger retracement occurs from that. The, the symmetry of the pattern is important to learn. And so I've just sort of illustrated here some um, shapes of some different symmetries that you will come across as you're studying this pattern on your charts. So the left side is illustrating a pretty symmetrical pattern. Uh, we can see where the A, B, C retracement, and then down to D, slope and angles are similar. Um, you can see that even the BC retracement is um, symmetrical within the context of the whole pattern. And then the one in the center, we start to see asymmetry in this pattern where we have the A to B leg, because this is the leg that we're sort of, the A to B is that we're taking our slope and angles off of. And then we have a fairly normal retracement, you know, very similar to what we see in the symmetrical, but then look what happens. This is what I was mentioning a few minutes ago, that suddenly you get this very steep slope and angle on your CD leg. Well, generally what happens in this type of scenario is that either the market is, is uh, now in a trending type of environment, or it could be that the market is going to be extending to one of those extensions. Uh, so it's important to be able to recognize this, recognize this, and usually you'll see long, wide ranging bars coming out of that CD leg. Sometimes there will be gaps in the CD legs the gaps in the CD legs, especially close to the completion areas are warning signs um, as are the long wide ranging bars. Now, another type of asymmetry is this type where here we have the illustration where this would be the A to B. And then look at how long this B to C is. Um, this is usually going to be a coiling type of formation. Coils are a form of the market storing energy. And usually energy is released and it will be out of a coil sooner or later. And so beware of this type of, of formation. It may be an invalid ABCD type pattern. You may think it looks like an ABCD because of the overall shape, but if there's a long coil in the BC, then it's probably going to invalidate it. And you have, if you have a long coil and then you see something like this, uh, that's, it just is going to invalidate that pattern. Okay. 
Now, another, another way of um, looking at symmetry is by the number of bars that form in the A, B, and the C, D legs. And so here's an example um, of an SNP uh, chart where we have, oh, I need to click here. There we go, where we have about nine bars. Now this doesn't, you know, sometimes you'll have patterns on longer term charts like daily charts that will have a lot, maybe it's been forming for weeks, maybe um, longer term charts, months. Um, so, you know, you don't have to be exact on it. So we'll say it's about nine bars. And then we'll say that this leg's about seven bars. Now, even though they're two bars different, that's not very, that's very much. So that would still be symmetrical as far as, you know, the number of bars that it took to form. What you don't want to see as in our, um, our chart that we just looked at, remember the, um, you know, straight down bar, that could be that you have nine bars in one leg and then two bars in your C to D leg. That, that is what that type of shape would probably look like. And that would be very asymmetrical. So here's a kind of easy way. And sometimes I use this in my own trading where I'm looking at a potential setup and it's, and it's forming. And I'll quickly, you know, sort of count if I'm doing intraday, kind of count the bars. And then if I see something abnormal with the C to D, it'll alert me to kind of pay attention to some things with that pattern. Okay. Now here's an example of a relationship uh, using Fibonacci ratios of what might appear to be asymmetrical with the number of bars, but actually ends up having some kind of a relationship. Um, so here's the example here. So here we have um, about 13 bars in the AB leg. Here's our retracement here, A, B to C leg, and the market turns down. And now we have more bars in the C to D leg. Well, I'd rather see more bars in the C to D leg compared to A, B than fewer bars, as in the example I just um, told you about, like, you know, nine bars and two bars. Um, this just means that the, if it's more bars, the market is just sort of maybe slowing down a bit. When you have fewer bars like that, then the market may be um, a changing character. Maybe it's coming out of a range and coming into a trending mode. Maybe there was some type of um, maybe news announcement that hit that market. Uh, if it's in the S&P, maybe it's some, you know, something um, that would affect that market if it's an individual stock, maybe it has something to do you know, with earning something, something like that. Um, but usually when it's more bars, as long as it's not in that BC, in that long sideways coil, the CD leg, I don't mind seeing more bars than that. But here we have 13 and 21 bars in this example. And if we take um, the 13 divided by 21, that equals 0.619, which is our you know, Fibonacci golden ratio, 0.618. And if we reverse that and we do 21 divided by 13, then we're coming out to about the 1.6, that's 1.5, that's pretty close to the 1.8. I just wanna mention because I, I use Fibonacci ratios, I, I do not use them in and of themselves. I use them combined with, you know, patterns, the structure of the pattern. And I also use them, like if there's a, you know, 618 retracement, I don't use that by itself. I'll use that with other um, tools, but I think they're a great guide for support resistance and for um, the pattern structure here. Okay, so there's a good example um, of that as well. And notice how this particular pattern on this example came, see this big gap to the upside area. So that came down, that pattern also came down into this gap area. And then you can see got a nice um, retracement to the upside. So by now you should probably just look at this chart and go, oh, that's what she's talking about. That's it, here it is. Great example of A, to be, and then look at this long, long call. I mean, you could go take a long nap, have lunch, 
play a couple of holes of golf, and this is still going on. And then look what happens in the CD lake. You have a couple of bars, and look at the size of the bars here. They look sort of normal, and then all of a sudden, this is what I call the Wiley Coyote cliff drop. Um, for those of you know who know Wiley Coyote, he was always hanging on to the edge of a cliff. Um, this is sort of Wiley up here before he realizes, you know, the only way is down. And then you see the long wide range bars coming here. So again, that long coil there, and then your long wide range bars, the steep decline. This is definitely warning signs. And this type of thing invalidates this pattern. So if a student I was working with sent me, you know, a chart like this without all my notes on it, but they sent it as an ABCD pattern, they drew it in that way, then these are the types of comments I would give uh, give back to them that it's not a valid pattern and for those reasons. Okay, forgot I had all these fly-in things. Somebody showed me how to do fly-ins and I, I may have gone all crazy. Okay, so now here's another um, example here of that sometimes this deep slope and angles can resolve with time symmetry. So if we look at the example, the chart here, we look at our A to B slope, and we have here, we have our B, C, we trace C meant, right? And then look at how the C, D leg starts to form. Notice that wide bar coming right out of the gate on this pattern, and notice the slope and the angle up to the first 1.0 D completion. Notice how different that slope and angle is than our AB line. It's very steep and we've got those long wide ranging bars in it. Well, sometimes um, it doesn't always invalidate the pattern, but what it can be telling you sometimes is that sometimes the price will reach to one of these extensions as it did here. Uh, and it needs more time for this leg to fill out and become more uh, symmetrical with the slope of the AB. So let me show you a little trick to do that. Let me do all my, <laughs> all my fly-ins, a few more clicks here, we'll get there. Okay, there, that was a slow fly-in. Okay, so what you can do to check your time symmetry is you see where we have our A to B slope. And so you have this vertical line here. So all you do is go from where your B completed and bring it down or up if it's a opposite pattern. So we're bringing it down to where our A started. And then we simply take a horizontal line and connect that to the vertical line. Then all we need to do is clone this line, move it over and you put it right where the end of your C was. So maybe this has already started to come up and you're noticing this is not symmetrical. And so then you can just kind of put this in and you take the horizontal, clone it, and then drop it, uh, drop it in over here. And so you can see now we have a simple way of visually seeing the amount of time it took for A to B to form and we drop it over and we can get a sense of where that symmetry would be. So let's say you did that, you saw a steep slope right here and you dropped it over, you go, okay, maybe this needs some more time to fill out. And so in this example, that's what, what happened. And that can be something with your, you know, your trade management, how you enter trades that can be a very, very strong tool. Okay, let's go on. So here's another example of the symmetry of this pattern. And uh, first of all, I just, oh, wait a minute, more fly-ins. Okay, so those two lines, I didn't want to clutter everything too much, but notice how first we have these harmonic swings. Again, this pink line, this swing down, retrace C mint, and then down here. So we had another A, B, C, D swing, and then started to form another A, B, C, D swing to the upside, except here we can clearly notice that again, out of the C, D leg, we see this uh, sharp slope and angle, especially as it gets above that B, 
um, forming. So we know right away that even if we counted all these bars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, let's say 15 bars. And then where is it when we get above B, we have one, two, three, four, like four bars. The fifth bar is well above it. So we know that that is very asymmetrical. And if we clone the slope and angle of this A to B, and then we just drop it over, we can see how much space there is, a lot of airspace um, in, in here. And so we can visually see how that is quite, quite different. So there's a couple little things you can do. Um, when, I, when I was learning these patterns, uh, first of all, you know, these are they're simple patterns, but you do need to learn the structure correctly or you, you're gonna get into trouble with them from not identifying some things. Um, but when I started learning them, I would just print out blank charts. I just print stacks of them and I have a ruler or a little plastic triangle. And I would just sit and see if I can identify that lightning bolt shape. And then once I got good at that, um, then I would start you know, looking to see, oh, What's this retracement here? And you can do the retracement by hand. You know, it's simple to do. Like again, if this is 10 points um, and you think that's a 0.618, then you can uh, multiply your 10 points by 0.618, subtract that number from the high, and that will give you, you know, the price about where the 618 is. And 50382, you can do the same thing. But you're gonna get really good at eyeballing these. I mean, I I don't even need to draw patterns in anymore. Of course, I've been doing it for a very long time, but you will get to that point where you will know, oh, it's a 618. Oh, that's a 1.618 extension. Your eye will just do it. And I think doing some of that by hand contributes to, to that. It's, it's a great, um, great skill to have. So here is an example. We looked at some charts that, um, you know, had a lot of A, B, C, Ds. But here um, is an example of a chart. This is the Dow Jones um, futures um, that here's an A, B, a larger A, B, C, D pattern that completed down the 0.618. Um, some of you might be thinking of a question, well, how do you know where it's going to complete? Well, you do your projections of the, of the pattern. Um, and notice here that we had an as asymmetric, you know, slope and angle coming out of here, but some more time kind of even that out created a second A, B, C, D there. So here we can even use the B, C extension, which is right down, you know, right down to here. So we're right in this area. But the important thing was this, is that once you see an A, B leg form, and then you see your B to C, you think you have you know, a pattern there, it starts to turn, that's when you can start really monitoring that C to D leg. And you can you know, be looking for you know, Fibonacci retracements. I like to use um, a few methods of support and resistance to combine um, with it. And of course, looking for the long, you know, steep bars, making sure that the pattern is forming without any big warning signs. But it's not unusual at all to see a second or third, sometimes four patterns um, develop within one larger pattern. And these smaller patterns that develop can really help you sort of um, pinpoint entry points. Um, you don't know if it will go to a 1.0, 1.27, 1.618 um, uh, extension, but your trade plan, you've, you must have a trading plan. If you do not have a trading plan, everything you are doing is completely random in the markets and you cannot um, you cannot determine if you're trading randomly what is working and what is not working. The only way that you can do that is by developing, first of all, having an approach, one just one approach, be an expert in that approach. You you know it better than anybody. 
um, you develop a trading plan that might take a little bit of time. You have some tools in which to um, track what you're doing, what's working, what's not working. Wh why are you making money here? Why are you losing money? If you don't know why or how you make money in the markets, and I don't mean just, oh, um, oh, I won on this trade, so I made money. Oh, I lost on that trade. No, there's more to it than that. And so you've got to be able to apply some type of simple metrics to help you recognize, um, was this a random or a not random trade? Uh, the, non the trades that are random need to be removed from your trading. That 100%, they need to be removed because um, those are going to mess up your results. And usually over the long term, uh, those are lucky trades. If you made some money, more than likely, they're going to be losing you money. But remember, we talked about in the beginning about the repetition. Well, you, ne you need to be able to have repetition in your approach to the market. So I'm a, I'm a discretionary um, trader, so, but I have these tested out. My trade plan is tested out. So I use that in a more of a mechanical approach. Um, and so I know when my um, trading um, results are due to, I'm following my trading plan, I'm executing my trading plan, or I made an error somewhere. So you have to be able to look at your trading and know if you um, are following your plan and if you're losing money, is it because um, of market conditions or is it because of trader error? So you've got to fine tune your trading down, down to that. But back to here, this is a strong tool here of identifying the second and third patterns to help you pinpoint a completion area. These little um, second and third patterns that can appear in the C to D leg, these are what I kind of think of as the market is sort of putting on the brakes when you start to see multiples of these forming. Um, because you know, here you have, you have sellers come in and look, you have buyers that push it back up and then the sellers push it down and then the buyers push it back up. Eventually, you know, the energy and one of those directions is going to, to give out. So I just think of it as the market putting on the brakes, like in this downward direction and these buy patterns are starting to form. So here's a, an example, again, of multiple um, patterns forming within one pattern from you know, a price chart. I think this is S&P again. Um, so we have three A, B, C, D patterns. We have, here's a larger pattern with the big A, the big B, big C, big D. So we have A, B, C, D up to here. And notice this is, this is the 1.0 D completion. The extensions are up here but you can find this 1.0 completion by using some of these smaller patterns. So C in the CD leg, we have the smaller A, the B, the C, and the D. And I didn't put it in because I didn't want to clutter the chart, but if we took the B to C extension, that would be a 1.27 of this swing coming right into that. So that's giving us a lot of information into that price area with this particular pattern. So even in the A to B leg down here, we had A, a B, a C, and a D. Now we don't know at that point that this larger pattern is forming and this could be a perfectly tradable pattern with a retracement and then the market turns up in the other direction and we can start to monitor it for another larger um, pattern to form. So here you can see this like a parallel, let me see if I, oh, I did, I had to put some more fly-ins. So we can see our parallel channel form with all of these little patterns in it. So we have the kind of contracting phase with the upward sloping channel and then here we have the expansion phase out of that channel. So now here, I just wanted to show you a couple um, of charts that we get towards the end here of the presentation. 
this is one of the charts that Larry Pesavano sent me. This is from 1999, you know, and so he used to, um, in the evening, the fax machine would go off and all the fax machine noise and you get three or four, sometimes five charts and Larry would hand draw these, these charts in. And so this is 1999, this was uh, AMAT Applied Materials. And this was just before the 2000 top. Now, one of the, I can't stress to you enough how strong of a tool it is to know these types of patterns. When markets are forming tops, we're gonna start to see these patterns form in multiples and they're gonna be showing up um, on indexes, they're gonna be showing up on stocks um, and they can give you a warning you don't know, of course, how large um, a move might be, but it certainly alerts you that there can be a change in the market direction coming soon. And um, so that's exactly what happened in the 2000. And in February, uh, January, February of 2020, I was seeing that happen. I went on to one of the stock charts shows I think two days before the big drop started, uh, was showing these types of patterns there. And then down to the bottom lows in March, they started to form again. And I can just show you chart example after chart example of some of those bottom patterns that were happening. But here's a nice example combining, like we've got sort of a parallel channel going up here. We have this, here's a little A, B, C, D. And you can see these, um, Fibonacci extension ratios that Larry marked in, they start to form a natural trend line. Um, we see the retracements down here um, and the large ABCD pattern up to here. And then I believe after this, AMAT had a big, a big drop uh, from that pattern. So let's move now to, but anyway, I used, oh, I was going to mention. So when I was studying this, I, I didn't, I'm very skeptical. I didn't believe any of it. And so for months, I would collect all of the charts that I would get faxed from, from Larry. And um, so after about four to five months, I took that huge stack of charts. It was a lot of charts. And I went back through every single one of them. And I went back to my charts to see what the outcome of them was. And this is sort of how you have to approach your own trading. You know, don't to believe me, but study this for, for yourself. Um, and I went back through and they had a high probability of getting, um, you know, a retracement to the downside. Some of them would get deeper retracements. Some would get more shallow and some would make new lows, you know, below where the pattern started. And then of course, some of them would get nothing and they would, you know, fail. And that's, that's typical because nothing works 100% of the time. But I could see that there was a high enough probability, a high enough retracement factor off of these patterns that it could create a trading, a trading uh, plan and approach with it. So I spent time, you know, doing that. And it takes all of it takes time. You have to be willing to commit some time. There's there's not a there's no shortcut. I wish if I had, you know, I would think in 24 years if there was a shortcut, I would have found it by now. Um, there's not, but it's fascinating to study um, these patterns, other aspects of technical analysis, combine different things together. So commit yourself to a process and enjoy, really enjoy the process because it is fascinating. So here's a current chart. This one I took from just the end of last week. So the 26th of February, um, that was on Friday. So that was a few days coming in. This is a I think it's a 60 minute um, chart of the S&P. So here we can see, over here we can see we have a, a large ABCD. So it's the top of the swing down to the low. And here's our C retrace, retrace cement. Remember that, and remember this has to stay below the starting point here. And then we come down to the D point. And notice here that we do have these long wide ranging bars that came out, but look what happened. Our time symmetry kind of kicked in. So instead of these coming you know, straight down to here where we may want to avoid that pattern, it filled it filled itself out with with time. I didn't clone this one, but if we were to do the little trick of taking the horizontal line up and then connecting with our time, 
and then dropping our time over, we'd be just about where this pattern completed there. So then the market comes up, has a you know fairly strong trending move to the upside. And then we form, we form this leg swing down here, and then A, a B, a C, and a D cell pattern, which then in turn is part of this larger A, B, C, D, by pattern. So, you know, one swing just really, you know, forms and starts going into another. But what we talked about in the very beginning about the repetitive swings and the harmonics, they're they're just all over, you know, this this particular chart. So it comes down here, it comes to this one point. 1.0 and it just sort of you know lulls there and then it's from the 1.27 where it gets a very nice move um, to the upside and forms another pattern here to the upside another a b c d cell pattern and um, this one you know had some steepness coming off of it so when you go to your charts you know just open up some charts kind of vary the the time frame so let's say you trade um well i would use gamestop but i kind of hoping i there's not i've mentioned this before there's not enough dramamine for me to trade <laughs> gamestop but whatever you trade you know if you trade forex um this these patterns repeat all the time in forex markets um stock charts um you know, will be repeating, but vary the time frames with it. So let's say you do trade Forex and whatever pairing that you trade, you know, go to a, you know, maybe a daily chart and then maybe a 60 minute chart, 15 minute, five minute. If you like to trade really short time frames, one minute, two minute, then, you know, scale down to that too. On, on each of those different time frames you're going to find different primary swings so we have like you know this swing here would be a primary swing this one's repeating a larger swing repeating on here so your two minute chart primary swing is going to be different than of course your daily chart primary primary swings but just go in and start seeing if you can find those repetitive swings and then from there you can see if you can connect those with a retracement for your B to C leg, and then start to look to see if there was some sort of turning point at the end of those A, B, C, Ds. Now, if you don't have Fibonacci tools or you don't have a neat drawing tool like mine where I can just put these um, ratios in. So, you know, this pattern, I could recognize this here and I can draw this whole thing in when this all price area is not even there yet. So I can see way in advance where these where these areas are. But you can simply use just simple cloned lines to do this. And then if you have a Fibonacci ladder, um, then you can do the extensions by putting 127, 1618 in and just pulling it down to the length of your line and it should expand those extensions. So those would be good, really good starting exercises. But if you would like to learn in depth this method, um, the approach, the process, um, and learn how to go through this step by step, trading requires a lot of skill sets. It's not just one skill set, it's a lot of skill sets. Um, so you're your approach, the, the patterns or the setups that you use are just one, one part of the skill sets. One of that subset is recognizing what you are trading and knowing if it's a valid or invalid um, setup. Um, recognizing the market conditions that you're in, that's a skill set and that takes time to study as, as well. But I put together, this is the most comprehensive course that I have ever put together. I spent a lot of time putting this together. I really, after 24 years, I really wanted to put something out for new traders, intermediate traders, even traders that have been trading a long time, but they, they just can't seem to find that consistency. 
Um, and I wanted to put my knowledge and my skills into this program, which I've done. And it's a 12 hour on demand um, program with no expiration. And I put it up on the Udemy, some of you might know that udemy.com site at this, that's actually their highest price tier. So I put it there. It, it is on sale. This will never go on sale because 12 hours at this price is, it, that's the best I can do for you. But they get a lot of traffic. So I'm hoping to help a lot of people out there. I had a lot of help. You know, I had some good mentors when I started. So I, I hope I can help a lot of people with this. But you'll be able to build step by step in the right order a foundation with all of the skills that you need. And once you master, you know, the um, trading setups, after each section here, I have my master chart tips, I went to my charts and showed you exactly how to do this, then you can move on to your trade plan and your trade management. That's the engine that fuels these the patterns are just the patterns, you have to have good trade management. I show you the one thing you have to remove from your trading. And I give you a download um, trade plan guide and you get my free PDF book and I show you how to apply some basic metrics so you are going to learn how to build your skills for your confidence and consistency. So I hope that you will um, get this course. You can use this link here. Just go to Udemy and uh, search for this title up here, Mastering Stock Futures Forex Trading with Pattern Recognition or my name or you can email me and I'll send you a link for it. So thank you for joining me. It's been my pleasure today presenting this information.